So hello everybody, welcome to this new presentation. I'm really sorry for the time I took to make the new occurrence, but actually I have a lot of work and more. Moreover, there is the Football World Cup and uh, yeah, I'm watching every night, so yeah, I'm sorry guys. Uh, the qualificative phase is almost over, so I will have more time. So if you look a bit on where we are now, I can select my hero, I can move around and we've got enemies. Uh, uh, today, what I want to do is that I want to be able to unselect this hero because you can see here I cannot unselect it. And later, I would like that to have an interface showing the PV and stuff and being able to show the PV of uh, the enemies and uh, other persons. So I will have to unselect it actually. So if I go here on edit, uh, if I go on the brain of the of our Herbert. You can see that here, this is the selection. So basically, I would like to say that when I am not clicking on my hero with the left mouse button, I would like to unselect it. That's, that's right. Um, yeah, I will just insert the new logic here. I like that the logic is on the same place, so I know where I have to add it. You are not, uh, op uh, you have not to do it, but I think it's a good way of maintaining. Uh, because this can get pretty long, so if you are used to put like the same things on the same place, then it's easier to edit later on. So here, let's put just uh, if left mouse button is pressed, and on the world. So here, hero selected equal. False. And actually, this is not going to work. Just, uh, just think about it a bit, and I will just show you that it's not going to work. You can see that actually now I cannot see my hero, and I think that you you can understand why. It's because actually the hero is also part of the world. So there, uh, as always, there is several way to fix it. Uh, the simple way I found was this. You just put here, so indentation, so it depends on the previous line, and you say else. So it's like if, uh, so if the love button was pressed on me, then hero selected will be uh, um, equals to true. Else, if there was a left mouse button that is pressed not on me, because this would have been cached on the first line. Uh, not on me, but anywhere in the world, then the hero selected will be false. And you can see that actually this is going to work just fine. This is perfect. So now you're, you're saying something, it's like it's not fun at all because uh, I've got some goblins here and actually it's quite boring game because I cannot do anything with them. So I would like to attack them. How could I attack them? So um, let's go here on the end. And actually here you can see that I have destination and stuff. So now what I would like to do is when my hero is selected, I would like that if I right click on enemy, then I attack enemy. So you can see right button pressed and hero selected. Actually this is a similar line that I have to write. Uh, the thing is, as before, I mean, I will just write it because anyway, it will be the same code. Uh, actually, I never tried to copy it this way, but... It doesn't work. Yeah, ah yeah, it worked. Okay, perfect. So I just copied, actually right click copy and it just copied the whole stuff. So here, right map pressed on world. And actually, this is going to have exactly the same problem as I showed before. So the enemy will also be part of the world. So I could actually just do the same thing as I did before. So here, paste. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, I'm sorry. So I'm just doing exactly the same thing as before. So right enemy pressed and I can just put enemies. So here, if the right click was pressed on enemies and hero selected, then 
this is false because I don't want to move. I want to set an enemy. So I will just say my my enemy. This is uh, an object uh, variable. This will simply be a, a little box that will hold the enemy of this guy here. So you can see that actually I will have my enemy. So this is just a preset uh, object variable. You can create another one if you would like. Just that it's handy to have one like that. My enemy equals... Uh, yeah, I could go with it or yeah, I will try it. And now you can delete this because for the moment I just want to put my enemy. So here if I right click on an enemy and my hero is selected then my enemy will be this guy. If not and I'm pressing anywhere else in the world then the destination it, it will be this this place on the world. Uh, yeah. I mean, I will just try with it. Uh, it's still a bit misty because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you will see that here. Actually, I have no no way to to see if it's working or not. So I will just put here highlight my enemy and red. Oh god, not add red. So here, if if it's working, actually, it will highlight this guy in red. So here, I light it in blue, and it's not working, because you can see it's actually not highlighting those guys in red. Yeah, so guys, I'm really sorry I had to cut off because I was getting a bit annoyed with this hit. And actually, it turns out that my hit was pretty fine. That was not the problem. The problem was here. If you go on the uh, here, on the logic of the guy, the properties, you're gonna use properties and combat. Actually, this guy is in the, was neutral and not team one. So as he's neutral, I mean I'm Swiss, so uh, I have no enemies. And basically that was a problem because I was clicking on the goblins and uh, as he was neutral, the goblins were not his enemies. So nothing was happening and these guys were just the world. The world. That's why you saw the little smoke here. Yeah, sorry, this was this was unexpected, and uh, actually this makes perfectly sense. So if you just just to reshow the line of code, because I don't know where I would cut off here. So actually, if the hero is selected and the right mice button is pressed on enemies, then my enemies equals this guy. Else, then actually pressed world and hero selected destination equal mouse position world. So, now if I just play, you can see that it's working like a charm. And actually, the guy, my little Herbert, is doing nothing. Because I didn't say him to do anything. Okay guys, so now we can select a hero. We can actually attack. I mean, we, he's not doing anything now, but he could actually take uh, an enemy as target so you can see that actually now the goblins are attacking us yeah we'll fix this attack because they're attacking much uh, really too slow for uh, for some kind of um, MOBA here so basically what now I would like to do is when when I target an enemy my hero have to run toward it right so if I go here to the um, to the code you can see that here the destination when it's not equal to zero I will move toward my destination and now the, the problem is I will have to deal with a uh, destination variable but also with uh, with an enemy my enemy variable so I don't know if you understand clearly but basically when I will click on the world I will have to go there so destination will be set what if now I uh, I press an enemy Actually, you should change the destination and the destination should be the enemy. So basically, here, what I will have to do is each time. So here, I'll have to add a line. And if this is true, actually, I will have to say destination equal, equal zero. Because here, when I assign an enemy, I would like that the guy has no destination. And here, the same way, 
I would like to say my enemy equals no. Uh, sorry, empty. Yeah, null. It's oh no, it's not empty. God, my enemy equals. Let me just check in the objects. Nothing. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah, void. It's uh, it's in the other programming languages. So basically, here I am setting what I'm when I am setting a uh, target on the world, I will erase the current enemy that I have, and when I will set uh, an enemy, I will uh, erase the destination that I have. So I will only have one target at a time. So you can see that now if destination is not equal to zero, then you move toward it. And actually now if my enemy not equal to uh, what was oh god nothing, yeah. Nothing then uh let's do something move toward my enemy. So here it's maybe not going to work uh, for several reasons. The first one is my enemy, I never instantiated it. So basically when you start the program, my enemy has a random value. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure about how Project Spark uh, do, do things like that, uh, initialization, but to be sure you should always, I know that I already said that in the other tutorials, but you should always initiate your variable. So basically here you should say my enemy equals nothing so now at the at the beginning you will have no enemy and no no target that's that's yeah that's totally that's totally fine so let's look a bit on what if it's working or not you can see select my hero here destination is working perfectly fine so here Oh, great, you can see that I target this goblin here. Perfect, it's going toward it. Now I'm going, yeah, it's working like a charm, actually. This is, this is perfect. So I'm kind of happy, but the problem is like now my hero is going to the enemy. I would like that actually when the hero is in range, it should attack it, right? So let's go back here. And basically, so when my my enemy is not equal to nothing that's true move toward my enemy so here yeah this should be here this is strange that it okay yeah it should do some uh, indentation so move toward my enemy and actually we should say here when oh no sorry it's already <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm silly well distance to my enemy is greater than you can just try with a random number. Uh, for memory wise, I think 2 was a great number. So basically when I will be further than uh, 2 meter, I will just move toward my enemy. Else, I want to attack my enemy. So now let's see a bit what's happening. So you can see I can still move here, everything working fine. So let's go there, attack the goblin. And you can see it's attacking him. Oh god! Look at him, look at him, he's destroying this poor guy. This is this is great. And actually now it's becoming to become a bit more fun, right? So you can see that several stuff. The guy is attacking really too fast. Um, and actually, you are interrupting the attacks of the guy while punching him, I think. Yeah, well, the, this hero is completely overpowered. But you can see that actually the game is beginning to be much more fun than, the, than what we previously had. Yeah, the hero also seems a bit invincible. And, uh, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I have to stop here for this tutorial, sadly. So I know that in the last tutorial I pro pro promised some spells and smart cards, but sadly I will have to do it. I will really, I, I really swear it, I will really try to make it as soon as possible. But uh, yeah, this evening uh, there is Spain playing against Chile. It's going to be a great game, so you can understand. But uh, tomorrow... Tomorrow, yeah, I might be able to do something. So, guys, thanks you for watching. Please uh, comment, like, share, and um, yeah, 
Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.